right, welcome back to Spirit Squared, episode 11. We wanted to do something fun. Uh, number one, I want to thank the Beckham Hotel, historic hotel. We're in the ballroom for the first time ever. It's a huge space. We've got a live audience tonight. Thank you guys for coming in. Yeah. Really, thank y'all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, we've got a great guest. Part of the reason why I had that music is it's definitely Louisiana through and through. If you ever yes, go to a Saints is. game, every kickoff, that's what you hear played. Oh, yeah. And before, during the warm ups and stuff like that, it's just got to get your blood pumping. We have uh, Mia Alba. Close enough. Alba, oh, okay. Yeah. We'll uh, from JT Millet. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I got to give props to our DJ. DJ, bring that beat back um, out of Tyler, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's back there. He's going <laughs> to play some jams for us in some of the interludes. We've got some samples that we've already put on the table. We're going to start with uh, JT Millet's uh, Louisiana Handcrafted Vodka. You're going to tell us a little bit about kind of some of the constructs because mm -hmm. you guys do things quite a bit differently. Uh, down in Louisiana. Yeah, we do. Right, right. So tell us a little bit about the history of JT, JT Melnick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, JT Melnick actually stands for our great great uncle John Melnick. Um, funny story, my name should have been Melnick, was supposed to be Melnick. On a person, it kind of sounds like a dead fish a little bit. So my mom was like, no, absolutely not. We're not naming our child Melnick. Um, but the family came, and so we um, it went from Melnick into Frugé. Um, Frugé is my maiden name, and now I'm all ball. So it was close. It was all close. Ball. Okay. Um, and so John Millet came from Germany and basically came over to the United States and followed the crop all the way down to Louisiana. Actually went to uh, Iowa, which is ironic because mm -hmm. my husband's from Iowa, so it's kind of cool how small the world is. Mm -hmm. And came down, followed the crop, and found a wet ground marshland in South Louisiana. And we've been, it was 20 acres at the time, and I'm fifth generation. So it was uh, late 1800s when he founded the land that we are on now. Uh, we've grown from there, but he plotted that first rice crop, which we think is around 1896, which is why we put that date right there on the um, bottle. And so from there, the crop has just gone from generation to generation, which uh, eventually reached my father and uncle, who are the owners of our farm. So we're on a rice and crawfish farm out in Branch, Louisiana, like a mm -hmm. tree branch. Really? Um, in the middle of nowhere, it's blink and light. If you blink, you will miss it. So right. it's very small. And so, yeah, we've been there since then, and we've just kind of been developing as agriculture does. And Kind of adapting to what the world has brought us. So, right. Yeah. So, what was the what was the switch that you you guys kind of had to, to 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 figure out for for to, to steer you towards whiskey? Yeah, it's it's kind of like the story of all farmers in agriculture. You know, like everything, it kind of goes up and down. And so, we have crawfish, but we got crawfish in the late '80s. The same thing happened where farmers used to be able, like uh, John Millick, used to be able to just grow rice and be able to be sustainable. Uh, contribute to their family, and that was the only thing they did. Um, and around the 70s, early 80s, the, the, the value of rice kind of went down and people had to do other things, and that's where crawfish came in. Mm -hmm. So all these farmers around were adapting to their crop, bringing in crawfish. Crawfish and rice are inverted seasons. You can do the same land, and they revert on that in a path, a natural path for sustainability. Well, the same thing happened in the early 2000s where the value of rice plummeted so much that crawfish wasn't good enough. So everybody and their mother has crawfish in Louisiana. You know, you always have an uncle you can go get a sack from. And so yeah. it's not really this specialty thing when you're doing that and it's not sustainable enough, but you can't just not plant. You know, you, you have to keep it going because your decision now affects five, six years, you know, down the line. And so when it came to just the value of more expensive to put um, your grain in the dirt than it was to actually harvest and plant, but not be able to stop because you've got crawfish and the livelihood, you know, we had to start thinking of other things. And so we kind of, we volleyed a bunch of different ideas. And honestly, the, the decision came from my father's going back and forth. And he's trying to get all these things. And he's telling my uncle, we're just not going to plant. My uncle's the farmer. And he's like, what do you mean we're not going to plant? Right. And one of his buddies just looked at uh, my dad, who's super serious, and was like, dude, relax. Take your rice, make some alcohol, chill out. And like, everyone's like, ha, ha. And he's like, on his computer, like trying to figure out whether you can do that. And so right. the, the rest is history, really. The entrepreneur brain in him, no one's doing what we're doing. And I think that's, it actually, um, it kind of developed from that. He actually didn't drink whiskey before then. He's a vodka guy. So the vodka was actually the main point where we were going. The whiskey came as an unexpected, pleasant, 
very big surprise, a shock to us as well, that has just developed into a really nice added skew to what we, I guess you could say we had no idea where we were going, and here we are. So. Right. So you, he started with vodka, mm -hmm. which most mm -hmm. distillers do. Yep. It's easy to make. It's yep. easy to distill. Um, but the big change is rice. Yep. So is it harder to distill, easier? Oh, I would say harder. Process? I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a distiller, haven't been in this industry. Uh, we, we all have backgrounds. You know, my father's an entrepreneur. My uncle's the farmer. He's the one out on the combine. My mom's a graphic artist. Shout out to her. She made the label. It's a badass label. Mm -hmm. Can I say badass on your podcast? Yes. I already did. Uh, you can uh, say, <laughs> you can say whatever And then you I actually came from a background in college coaching. So we just all kind of came together as a family and the people that we have around us and just kind of figure it out every day on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But this concept, the rice, that came, he was a martini guy, always yeah. saying, like, when you went out to dinner with him, he was very particular about his martini. And sometimes he would, like, go to the bar, like, can I do it? <laughs> like, yeah. I'll make my own martini. <laughs> like, he yeah. was very specific about what went in it. And so when we went on this, he, just the, the concept of it, really, the idea of a whiskey just wasn't even in our, it never thought it was an option at that point. His goal was vodka, which makes this different, not only for the rice, but as you said, all distilleries start with the vodka because it's mm -hmm. very easy. It's simple. You can do it fast. You can get your brand out there. You can get some people very hyped about what you're about to do. Sure. And the minute the whiskey comes out, you usually the vodka goes away. You never mm -hmm. realize maybe they have a distillery. Ours is a bit different because our focus, our main thing was vodka. Whiskey was all, almost accidental. Like right. we joke sometimes that we put whiskey in the barrel just to prove that you couldn't do it with rice. Like we joke around. Yeah. We didn't do that many barrels because so many people – when we went to talk about this concept, going to an ADI conference, asking people about rice, and people were like, no, I've never heard of rice. You, right. you can't do that. And if there's anything that will motivate my father more is telling him you can't do something. And he was like, oh, you can't do it? All right, sure. I'm, yeah, we will. Right. And so the vodka was the main thing. And six or seven recipes back and forth until he said, quote, this is the best martini I've ever had. And we all kind of like, what? Wow. What? This was how many years ago? Yeah, this was back in 07. Okay. Yep, and it's, it's been, I mean, probably the early 2000s is when the conversation of knowing what the grain was going to do, what farming and agriculture the trends were. Um, the entrepreneur in him was reading all these things and seeing, I uh, don't read those things, but he does. Mm -hmm. And so making the, those adjustments. And so that conversation from the start, I mean, it took a decade to the point of sometimes we have to remind ourselves that we just released our whiskey a year and a half ago. Right. Because when we're having these meetings, constantly reminding, like, we're brand new. Yes. Like, because in our brains, we're like, oh, my God, we're 25 years old, and this is just not going anywhere. When it's very much going somewhere for, right. for being so young. And so that conversation, um, putting whiskey in a barrel, our product is made 100% from rice. And yeah. so the... Probably the first question I'll get with um, vodka specifically, but I'll get it with whiskey is a sake. Like people get very confused with a sake. Rice itself has never been really explored mm -hmm. in spirits in America. Mm -hmm. And so ours is not only different because of the rice, but in terms of the whiskey is the style in which we do it. Mm -hmm. So um, in, when you're talking about a bourbon, the most obvious thing is 51% corn. So ours is not right. a bourbon because we have rice, right. but it is an American whiskey in the category we actually because no one's ever done rice, we use the exact, I guess, process of a bourbon besides the actual recipe. Our right. recipe is ourself, our, our rice. We use a special strain for it that we've kind of manipulated for this. Mm -hmm. But we kind of took the same concept of that flavor profile because we didn't really know what we were doing. And the process just kind of developed from there. But sake is kind of the only thing that us as Americans can relate to a spirit because right. of the grain. But sake yeah. is actually just a fermented rice. So it's not nor beer nor uh, wine. It's kind of in the middle. You can find it on both. But the ABV is about 14%. So it doesn't go into the still. It's not a distilled spirit. And it doesn't come at the high proof going through and out the still. Yeah, when so. you go to a contest and you bring one of these, you have to enter into a different category. Yes. You can't even enter into a bourbon or uh -huh. a whiskey category, right? And that's probably one of the hardest things. You'll see me like I'm entering a spirits competition. And I'll just be that at my desk. I just staring at it, like weighing, but going back and forth because like I can go into the bourbon, but the first thing they're going to do is call me like, Hey, you put this in a bourbon. This isn't a bourbon. It says whiskey on the thing. I know it says whiskey, but it competes with a bourbon. Like mm -hmm. if you blind it, you're, you're going to think it's a bourbon sure. and we do the same process of bourbon. They're like, ah, you know, and sometimes like you can't do that. So then I'll go into, you know, a different or the other. Technically we should be in the other, right. but then like, what are you competing against kind of thing? And then like, 
uh, so, like platinum award for other. And people are like, <laughs> is that an award? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, so, and it's interesting because as we develop into this, we are actually beginning, as we talk about distribution stuff, starting to subclass our whiskey as a bourbon to where it's placed properly. Because we're finding if we don't, like, I, I guess, control what it should be called, even though it is a whiskey, if we allow it to be kind of put into the bourbon, it'll be placed on the shelf next to those that it competes with. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, in the other, we immediately put it into the Japanese whiskey spirits, which it shouldn't be. It's right. no, it's it's not even the same. While the rice is similar, that's, uh, I'm gonna digress all into that, but it's um, completely different, so we want it to be where it competes. Very yeah. cool, very cool. Everybody enjoying this? Pretty yeah. different, yeah, so. a little bit different? Not bad? Well, cool. All right, we're gonna go to the second segment. We'll play a little music and we'll get something else for it. Perfect. And we'll move into operations. Operations. <laughs> My favorite. All right, we're back with our guest, Mia. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I'll mess it up. Uh, with JT Mellick, uh, we have poured for our guest the small batch. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a blend of whiskeys, correct? Um, it's just one whiskey, okay. a blend of our barrels. Barrels, mm -hmm. correct. Yep. Okay. So that's what we're enjoying now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into some of the operations. What, what does operations look like in, in Branch, Louisiana? Oh, what does it look like? A hot mess of beautiful succession. That's what it is. <laughs> it is just a family farm. As you can see, anybody that works with family, it is just a hot mess all the time of us just trying to figure it out. And I think that's it's funny because uh, we're, we're not open to the public yet. It's very much an operating rice and crawfish farm. We kind of, again, we, we started this as a sustainable measure to add value to our rice crop. We mm. never in a million years thought this would be a brand. Mm. Like, if you asked, we were making Mike's best martini. Like, it was just going to be something that we were like, right. all right, we're still selling to the mill. We're just going to make you the best martini you've ever had. And it just turned into something. The vodka was received very well in the beginning. Uh, we thought we were going to do a couple hundred cases. We ended up doing a couple thousand cases, which mm. is very small in terms of big brands, but very much, whoa, I guess we got to order more bottles, like right now. And so operations, everything, you can kind of come down to, we do everything ourselves. So when we talk about not only the spirit itself in terms of a grain to bottle spirit, but ever, like if you were to come in, and see our fermenter tanks, you can literally see the welding patterns of us like building it ourselves. Like mm -hmm. we obviously, our still was brought in, our master was brought in, but yeah. our, our fermenters, our tanks, everything is just handcrafted by all of us. If there's a fix, you better believe there's some duct tape around here, like figuring it out. Like right. everything is a new solution. It's never like, okay, hey, this doesn't work. We'll call people, get some advice. We're like, that's just not going to happen in Louisiana. You know, when you compare other brands and locations, it's like, that's great, but like, you know, even a Rick house, you know, that, that was a, a big thing we didn't consider. Where are we going to store our barrels? And, mm -hmm. you know, we talked to a guy that really um, is an expert in Rick houses. And I'm like, up oh, with hurricane season? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, absolutely not. And talk about the heat. I mean, we get the, when you go in Kentucky at the top, I'm like, that's our bottom level. Right. <laughs> we don't need any more heat. Right. So in terms of operations, we do everything ourselves. We kind of use um, the brain, I guess, our, our distiller now used to fix and uh, make airplanes. So in terms of the aspect of learning, at the end of the day, the first distillers were farmers. Farmers and mm -hmm. equipment, engineers, people can look at this piece of equipment and see it in their brain and fix it. And so mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the, I guess you can say our operations is like the dirt. Like we move the dirt ourselves, we make it into a crop, and we deliver a, a beautiful spirit that has come from it. Um, everything from start to finish, we do on our site. Why is it important to, to consider like grain the glass compared to maybe some distillers that source their barrels, mm -hmm. meaning they, they buy their barrels from a, a large manufacturer? So you, you, there's been some, some, some different manu distillers in Louisiana that may have chosen that path. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to consider grain the glass? Yeah. I think it's important, at least for us, the concept of buying barrels, like I said, we didn't, we didn't start this to be a brand or really even to compete against other brands. We started this as the value added, but not only for the crop, but something like we would, nothing ever leaves our farm unless it's approved by all of us. It goes through a lot of levels. 
we have, it's actually, it's harder to make our vodka than it is our whiskey. You have a big circle of, I guess, failure and your barrel has a lot of leadership in what's going to happen. And you don't find out until really five years later. Mm -hmm. The vodka takes twice as long and you'll know immediately when it's off the still, it's done, squash it. it. We have had to fail a lot of them. It's not like, mm, it's good enough. Like we would rather run out and be short supply than give somebody something that is not value added to them. It's value added back to our land and value added to our people. So they're feeling like a part of this experience. It's, it's, it's creating something, not just covering something with a Band-Aid, I guess you can say, just because we have to make it. And so when you, you just think about the concept, I laugh sometimes, if you ever see a crooked label, like our bottle, something we probably wouldn't have done, it's at an angle, which mm -hmm. means that it can't yeah. be put on an operation like an automatic. So every single bottle is hand labeled, hand spun. Our barrels are well, dropped Well, they do that off. in Mexico too. Yeah. But it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. So it's just kind of like you feel that when you see a little bit of a label and it's handwritten down here, nothing yeah. is mass produced. It's all done. Okay. You can see batch numbers on the back of our vodka and our whiskey. When it comes, you know, when it comes to buying, I think the toughest thing is, you know, people want to know where they're spending their dollars mm -hmm. and knowing that when you're choosing JT Millick, you're spending it on this product. You're spending on the rice back to agriculture, back to the land. But when you talk about buying, I think our hardest thing is, it's just kind of, I guess, the educational piece of it. And not only for consumers, but even talking in a room, it, it, it's very difficult sometimes for us when we're competing against large brands. And I'm having to remember to remind people that these brands are bought, you know, because right. the concept if you think, and you don't, we don't have this experience is how can blank come out of nowhere and have five SKUs and then have a sixth one and a seventh one. And how are they in 48 states? Right. Like, because they, they gained about five years on us because they don't have to wait, you know? And right. so it's, it's definitely a challenge with the consumer base of creating that value back, knowing that it's not just a lineup. This is all made by us and it's got a little variety and a, I think that's why our barrel program is so, so successful because each one tells its own story oh, of, yeah. you know, where it's been in our warehouse and what happened to it or, you know, short barrel or what this, what that. But for me, at least, I think it's really important because it just, uh, from like I said, from start to finish, it just, it's, it's quality that we've all approved. Yeah. Right. I, I think an important note that a lot of people don't realize, I mean, well, you may be now that uh, you're tasting a, a, a rice distilled product mm -hmm. is that if you're someone who has trouble with wheat or if you have trouble with rye, this is a perfect spirit for you. Or if you know someone uh, who has trouble drinking wheat products or rye products, um, this is a great alternative. Um, talk to me really quickly. I'm sure you have lots of examples. <laughs> Maybe your, t your, your best two of lessons learned through the process of either storage or mm. distillation, because uh, whiskey's its own like yeah. monster. Oh yeah, um, and I'm sure there were a lot of hard lessons learned. Oh, absolutely. Um, I would, I would assume cooperages would be one. Because oh yeah, you're dealing with a lot of humidity. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a lot of different temperatures compared to Kentucky, mm -hmm. and so here you are trying to do a Kentucky style product yeah. or one that's kind of developed there mostly in Louisiana yeah. where temperatures are, like you said earlier, very, very different. So every day your barrel can swell and, and contract yes. during certain seasons. So yes. I'm sure there were tons of lessons learned. Every day, every day there's a lesson. <laughs> if, uh, you know, when it comes to barrels, people ask, that's the main question they'll ask us, where do you get your barrels? Anybody and everybody who will come to Branch, Louisiana, <laughs> especially like right. in, the, in the beginning, and it's like you're calling these people and you got these big brands getting thousands of barrels a day. Right. You know, we fill five now, which is a huge deal. We used to be at one to two. Now we're five a day. Like that is big. Five, five barrels. Five barrels. You go to these big dogs, they're like 3,000 a day. And I'm just like, what? Like what? The yeah. concept of that. So, and explaining when our, when our, our brand is kind of blowing up, it, for, coming back to that grain to bottle, that handcraft, I'm like, no, yeah. five barrels a day. <laughs> like, it's not hundreds. It's definitely every single one is done. But in terms of like the Cooper, just anybody. So I think oh, wow. that's another reason why our, our barrel program is, you know, you'll get all these different yeah. flavors is because any and all Cooper juice. I mean, at one point we had like six different kinds right now in our warehouse. Anybody that would deliver, because in the beginning we're like, oh, we'll take seven this month. And they're like, seven no like yeah. literally have hung up on us like okay we'll call somebody else <laughs> and then right. um so when we were dumping our first batch 
we had so some of the first barrels that we ordered were the 30 gallon barrels okay, okay? Yeah. so for us i love 30 gallons yeah that's my like, favorite so Perfect. for us, we're like, oh my God, we're making whiskey. Like we're going to do this, you know, because everyone's like, you can't make rice, a whiskey with a rice. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be so, you know, determined we're going to do it. We ordered these barrels and we're pumped. And one of uh, his mentors comes over to see what we got going on because we're just pumped. We're doing this. Yeah. And he comes out and he's like, what is this? He goes, what the F is this? <laughs> and we're like, barrels, whiskey, we're making whiskey, you know? And he goes, these, I told you to get the big barrels. And we... I looked at him and he looked and I was like, these aren't the big barrels. Right. And he was like, I don't know. Like, are these not the big ones? And we got like 15, 30 gallon barrels. I love them. Thinking that we were just going to drink everybody. Like the whole country was going to drink from 15 <laughs> barrels, 30 gallon barrels. And we're like, is this not right? And that's why there's a six month gap between this special release we did in November of 2021 to the yeah. actual launch in July, 2022, because we're like, Oh, um, can we take more than seven? <laughs> like, yeah. Can we get more than seven? Just kidding. And we want the big ones, the 53 yeah. ones. 53. And so when we dump those, again, first time dumping, we really didn't have a system. So we like Googled it, like how to, <laughs> how to dump a barrel. <laughs> and we like use this system and we're ready. You know, we're coming out and we're going to make a video and Mike turns the corner and a distiller Brett comes out and he puts this thing out and you go, boom, the whole thing. I mean, somebody could have gotten injured. It's funny because nobody was like there. And I go, oh, there's the whiskey. It's all over the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, we have 14 left. Like, oh, like hey. we've got it. And so we had to stop. We were going to launch that week. And we were like, we don't know how to get the whiskey out of the barrels. Like, we should have done that earlier. So, like, that was a lesson learned. Maybe prepare yeah. on how you're going to get it out. And then sitting around, oh, we, we finally tasted, you know, what, was, uh, what is now this small batch. Yeah. And we're sitting around. And we would sample every month, you know, and it's not until it's, like, real and when whiskey like hits, yeah. it hits. Like you'll have times you're like, okay, this is like turning out good, but you never, you can miss it. Like right. you can miss it very quickly, especially in the weather patterns of uh, Louisiana. And so we tasted it and like, we we're, I was like, oh my God. Like I'm looking around, like, because we won't talk to each other, you know? So I'm right. writing it down, like trying to look over, like if you're not thinking the same thing, I'm thinking you need to get out because this is ready. Like this is good. Yeah. Yeah. And so we go around and we all did like this. It, it, there was like this moment of silence. We're all like, this is ready. And then we all kind of like looked around at each other and like nobody moved. And then <laughs> Mike's like, what do we do now? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, we sell it. We need labels. We need labels. And we're like looking around, <laughs> find mom. Like she's a graphic artist. We need labels. And she's like, I got it. Like, and so like she made the colored labels and then talked about the blue yeah. once we did it. And so just in terms of like, I guess, I guess the lesson comes in like, trusting the process that it actually ended up in a lot I mean that just happens every day in terms of we really thought eventually these bottles would just be put on a roller now right. it's just it's going to be hand spun by one little device that literally has a paint roller on it yeah. because a piece broke off and we are not getting rid of this machine right. it is staying with us till the end and we just we fix it and so it's just it's kind of funny things like that that I think just it really creates a nice story and it brings it in there um, there, there actually is a round of like vodka that has like this, uh, the pink, the label, the batch number on the back is hot pink mm. because, uh, one of my buddies that was writing the number on it, colorblind, thought it was the silver marker. It was hot pink. And so you can see like some hot pinks and those are just, those are just funny stories that just kind of like make it a really great brand to connect with. One of the things I remember you telling us, cause I've met you twice, mm -hmm. um, one at, once at a barrel tasting and another at... Uh, when you brought the product over mm -hmm. for us to taste at one of the, uh, the bourbon groups I'm in. Um, this is batch two or three or four, right? Right on the back. Let's see. What's that say? Uh, 323. 323. So that's the third batch of 2023. Right. We're so, really creative when we say our batches. Yeah, really creative. <laughs> um, I remember you talking about you did batch one and it was like fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you guys were like, hell yeah, you oh, release yeah. it. And then you, you, you get batch two going and you're like... What do we do in batch one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the note taking or what you think you're going to remember. We did batch one, ready. You know, we have this meeting and then we have a goal and we're going out and we're making it. And he says, he grabs, he's like, ah, you know, we're, we're going to put them together. And Brett, our distiller, is like, how many barrels do you want? And Mike's like, eight? Eight. Give me eight barrels. So he goes through all of them and he gives them like 15, you know, to choose eight. Picks eight, dumps them together, smells and tastes. It's like, hmm, this is easy. Like, he comes in, man, he comes in with this. Proved by me, goes to the next person, proof. It's like, 
I don't know why people, like, literally sits back. He's like, I don't know why people say blending's hard. That was pretty easy. Go to the second batch. He's like, eight. He's like, okay. And he, like, goes through all of it. Can't find anything. Okay, not these barrels. Bring me another barrel. Goes, it was like three weeks later. He like comes out of the office. He's like, I'm about to throw this whiskey across the wall. I cannot figure out what I did last time. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. It took like four and a half weeks for yeah. him to finally, and we, we finally started matching in terms of having data on cooperages, uh, time frames where they are in the warehouse. Yeah. Um, just under, and the, the barrel program really helps us with that too. Um, when we finally do it, we'll, we'll sample it together. I'll pull the ones that really stand out, but sometimes he'll like try to steal them back as an enhancer for the nose. And sure. so he's really developed what he needs as like a starting and a finish point. And then the rest just kind of create the differences. Um, I'll show, I kind of the perfectionism in all of us, you know, thinking that it had to be exactly the same, knowing that it's craft. You're, if, if you really drank JT Millick, you're gonna spot the differences. Um, but all in all, we, the nose is the most important thing. If we have that, the flavor palette will just come with what the experience delivers. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So our next segment, we got something pretty cool to announce. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> DJ, we'll go to the next one. All right. We're back with segment three, and we have poured a single barrel of uh, JT Mellick. Uh, this is out of one barrel, barrel 194. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's here is, uh, has the ability to enjoy it. Uh, we have some cool stuff coming up, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I've been able to participate in this freaking mic because I never wear one. It's always <laughs> one that's right there. Uh, but I've been a part of the tasting that you came over for, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was more of a prelude to like what you thought you knew. Yeah. And then uh, we did a barrel pick as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our barrel society did a barrel pick where it's the largest amount of people that have ever done a barrel pick that I've been a part of. Yeah. I've been a part of about 30, uh, and, and we unanimously picked a barrel, which you lost a bet on. I did. I think. I so, did. I really um, thought you were going to go a different direction. But let's talk about growth, because you guys have gotten a lot of traction in Louisiana uh -huh. already. I, have a, I grew up in Louisiana. For, I've talked about it on the uh, podcast before. I, I grew up most of my life in Monroe, mm -hmm. but my folks live in New Orleans, so I've traveled kind of the whole state. I know a lot of people that are in those groups, and they speak, speak highly of your, your product, but it can't just stay in Louisiana, right? Mm -mm. It can't. It really can't. Right. And I, I actually, it's really exciting to see, I think a, a stress for us was once, and it kind of goes into that learning question you had learning really what the alcohol industry is and what it takes and shelf placements and this like when you go buyer patterns when you go and see something on the floor it's not necessarily there because it's delicious it's there because it's rented property and you buy that space that was a big awakening for us because we thought our, our background is crawfish rice seafood you know if it's fresh people want it if you have good quality crawfish people are going to buy it again it's not necessarily like oh you know it's it, it was a different frame of mind. So we thought if we made something delicious, it would be as simple as getting there. But we quickly realized that we just don't have the resources to compete with these huge brands. And so when we took a step back, you know, trying to figure out how are we going to compete on a level when it's not going to be in the store, people are going to literally have to seek it out, find it, and make it a habit to go and get it, which as you know, is very difficult to click mm -hmm. multiple buttons. Right. And so just kind of diving into the digital side of it and really making it a people's brand, it is a brand that is shared. You found it, you introduced it to it because somebody told you about it. Mm -hmm. Like they shared it with you, they brought it to a party. And to start that, you know, starting with videos and social and all these things, and it has absolutely blown up in the sense of, I don't have any data to support it, but I swear it's like the, top five most underground moved spirit there is. I mean, it is in 48 states, I have data. 48 states, four countries. I mean, it's, it's highly sought after. And so getting into distribution, I think a lot of consumers think that it's, it's, it's as simple as me saying like, hey, I'm ready to go here. And they're right. like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot of pieces to go in. Yeah. So the great news is we've been working on it for years now, but we are going into Texas yes. in February. Yeah. And yeah. we're super <laughs> pumped about it. So we're going on with all of our SUs. This is like a, a big long term, just in terms of all pieces trusting the brand, and I've absolutely loved it. We we got the official 
we want you last week. We announced it, and people are starting to talk about it, tell people. I'm already getting retailers that are starting to call and comment, like, when? I've heard you're coming. And I just absolutely love that because this brand, it's a family brand that's shared with family and friends, and that's what everybody is doing. And so we're coming in February. That means it's going to be open to the entire state. Mm -hmm. We did, like, a little release to go straight to just one retailer. Um, yeah. That was just because of the, the ability of proving. So in order to get to a state, you have to prove that you're going to sell but you can't get into the state until you sell, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so we are trying to prove that. And so this is this means any retailer, any city, any any area can bring it in for their consumer. So tell your retailers right. it's coming and we're super pumped about it. Right. So we, we're a big state, just big. so you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, I think you can drive all the way across the same day. Pretty much. Uh, Texas and is probably the state that makes me pull my hair out every road trip. I'm just like, how am I still here? Right, right. <laughs> so, so um, I hope that you're ordering more barrels. Oh, right. oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, oh yeah. And are you ready for the production that you're gonna need to satisfy consumption? Yeah, I, man, I just know. We're pumped about this, but everybody going to be mad at me. Everybody <laughs> going to be mad at me because yeah. the amount of barrel requests I already have, I'm like, we don't even have that many barrels. Right. <laughs> we don't have that barrels, period, like right. at all. Like that is just, and it kind of, it's exciting, but you know. You really want a barrel? You like, give you one mic. That just, yeah. Mic just pops we out. go back and forth. What's worse, to run out because you're sold out? Or to run out because you're sold out. Like, which one is it? And it's like, a, it's an argument on both ends because you'll hear like, oh, you're sold out. That's a great thing to be. And I'm like, yeah. when people forget, people forget quickly. You know, yeah. where our world is moving, that, yep. that stresses stresses us out. Um, the, the factor is, you know, we will never run out of this baby right here because it's fast. And while it takes double time to distill, you do bottle it after a week. So it's right in these babies. Anything can go wrong, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. We can have a hurricane. Uh, knock on wood for that one. I, didn't, yeah, I don't know why I said that. I'm going to do that. Um, but in terms of Dublin, so we are, we have, we won't really see it this year, but in 2025, you'll see a dramatic increase in what we've done. So um, in terms of when we go from this year, every year we're increasing by like 150%. I, I'm not the numbers person. Like when you take yours and you almost. Right. A, a lot One more. and a half. Yeah, so we, we go from last year we had 59 barrels total. And it does, like, when you think about that and you think about. 59 total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you think about that and then you see where it is, it, it's kind of mind-boggling to think, like, I'm sorry, what? You only have that? I'm like, yeah, there's a limited. If you have a bottle of JC Miller, like, that is a big deal. Like, a big wow. deal. Wow. This year we're going in, we're going to increase to, um, and again, we go in winters and summers. So a barrel, yeah. it's about four and a half years because it has to survive a winter and a summer complete to complete the, the, the sure. harvest cycle is what we go on. Yeah. So when I talk about years of barrels, we're actually talking about kind of half years. So right. our newer barrels are coming, um, at, we'll taste it in February. And then the next round of barrels are coming at the end, like August the time. And so when we have that, we go to 126, then 200 and some, then we'll go to 400 and then to six, and then to like, it increases kind of very much so. But How big is the rickhouse? We, um, we have house. about, yeah, it's, um, it's a, we call it a barrel warehouse, I guess you say. It's low to the floor, three pallets high, um, and goes down. It has about uh, 2,000 barrels in it, and we just okay. broke ground last week to build another one. Um, so, I mean, we have barrels. I'm pretty sure, like, I sit on a barrel at my desk because you're just putting barrels in corners everywhere because right. we're out of space. Yeah. And it's just like, break ground already. <laughs> like, right. we're going. We're doing it. And so um, we have that. It's being built right behind it. And, um, yeah, and we're just we're keeping production. 59 barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, so round up to 60. Typical barrel yield after four to five years in your climate is 150-ish? Pretty much, yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's hotter inside the warehouse than it is outside. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, the, I mean, one of the most recent releases only had 80. So let's just say yeah, 100. I'm, I mean, that's not a lot of juice. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. It. Um, I'm hoping, especially the short barrel you're referring to, I'm hoping that that was a leaker. Yeah. Um, we don't, We. I mean, Throughout the entire, not only the 60 barrels, but there's only like three, four full-time people, two mm -hmm. distillers, myself, and we have a sales rep for Louisiana. That's the only full-time people. Mike mm -hmm. has multiple, he's an entrepreneur, he has multiple companies. So he's got his hands right. in a lot of different hats. All of our like kind of uh, director leadership there 
is in other pieces because there's right. the farm and all the all these operations. So with that, we don't have the people or time to move stuff around. Like yeah. I tell people when we're doing barrel picks, like what's going to be the yield? I'm like, we'll find out when you pick it in a dump. <laughs> like, cause I can't pull, I have no idea. I'm hoping that one was a leaker that we just didn't know. He yeah. thinks maybe it was out the top. So it, it folds in there nicely because if that's the case, then we will never reach eight or 10 years. Like right. it will never yeah. get that far. Cause the, the summer that we had our yield for single barrels was about 195 bottles mm -hmm. before the summer. And it dropped to 160 as the average, mm -hmm. which is not good, but right. I'm hoping it's just also could be the location we do have because we ran out of space. If you come to our distillery, we have a, a learning moment. We have this cage that okay? truly a cage, it's like a cage. And it's like the size, like from you to me, about right here. Mm -hmm. And we thought that's what all of our, our production would, would be. Like mm -hmm. we thought we could store things in this cage, right. LOL. Like, no, we had shelves where we had our barrels, like yeah. right next to our office buildings. Like that's safe. Like what are we thinking? Just, and so when we built our still, we just had this hangar area where we had our barrels. Well, originally that's not safe either because if something happens, you've got a fire hazard to death. So that's where we decided to build the warehouse across the street. But those are our, our first two years of production is in that building, which is way hotter because it doesn't have the, I guess, when we built that, it wasn't set in mind for, oh, this is going to be good. We need to prepare for it to be long term. Right. It's much hotter. It doesn't have the air system that we put in sure. the natural air that the other one has. So it's totally possible that the first two years of production, it just got way, way hotter. Just yeah. uh, So hopefully the ones that have lived in their best life in the warehouse haven't had that big of a loss, but we'll find out. We'll find out. You will very yeah, soon. We will. And just like just like uh, wine, I mean, when you can taste when it's young. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, if you're trying to dump after two years, you're going to be able to tell mm -hmm. that there's not a lot of char. Yeah. And, and it's going to taste young to somebody who has a developed palate for sure. All right. Final part of the segment. I, this is single barrel, mm -hmm. right? Somebody yeah. picked this. Maybe your family. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of a group that, that got the opportunity to uh, pick a barrel. What does the barrel program look like now? Yeah. Your inbox is blown up, I'm sure. Yes. Um, what does it look like if somebody wanted to, to get a group together, to, and there's 150, 160 bottles, so yeah. obviously a lot of friends, family, yeah. or uh, people that enjoy whiskey. What does that look like right now? Yeah. It's beyond anything that I thought it would be, which is really amazing. And it's, it's, it's funny to keep trying the, like the muck of it when you're in it. And like me explains Mike all the time, like a perfect example earlier this week, he was like, okay, I'm going to call blink, blink, blink. I'm going to see if they want a barrel. We, we just, I, I, we need to get things moving. I'm like, whoa, 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 we don't need to sell any barrels. We are very much in a wait list. It's like a wait list. And I'm like, yes. Oh, wait list. We don't have any barrels because they are all gone. <laughs> like trying yeah. to, he's like, but his, you know, the brain, the barrels yeah. are right there. And I'm like, I know they're right there. But we, to answer that, it is, and it's amazing to see, like, shout out to our first original people. Like, so when I, we have our Acadian and Bourbon Society um, out in the hub where all the administrators are mostly in Youngsville, but it's surrounding that area. In order to do this, you know, when you have his brain of the entrepreneur spirit, we just, one, the fact that the whiskey was good is already what do we do now? We didn't have like a structured plan. So for me to come in literally uh, 60 days later and be like, hey, uh, we need to do a program. He's like, are you out your damn mind? Like we just released this. We need a plan. I'm like, I know, but we're trying to reach all consumers. Right. Okay. Just trust me here. We're, all consumers. He's like, I don't like this. Like we need to be successful one thing at a time. I'm like, I know. And so he was like, what are you going to give me? And I was like, bet. I was like, I'm going to, Acadia and Bourbon Society, they're going to do a barrel pick. And within 48 hours, the barrels, the, all the bottles are going to be gone. Right. He looked at me. He was like, really? I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right, you do that and you can have a barrel program. I go, great. I shut that door. I called Joey. I'm like, Joey, I need you. Help me. But like, I hadn't even called him yet. I was like, you've got to do me a solid. Like, you're going to. You're going to sell this you did, you need, sell Come it. on, call everybody. Okay, we're going to dump this thing. And they were amazing because. We didn't have this label yet. So it was a label like this. It was 96 proof, but it was one single barrel, barrel 92. And let me tell you, you build it, they will come. We had a line wrapped around. Within That's a awesome. couple of hours, they came, got that barrel. Um, Mike was like, holy crap. And I was like, we're doing this. And so, but then to tell retailers, okay, now we don't even know your whiskey. There's no real uh, pass to look at this. 
And so we had um, Sean Pines in the Oil Center, Nunu's in Youngsville. We had Kanata's and we had Hocus Pocus, which has three locations. Right. And all four were getting to do my first barrel picks in different regions. And all of them, all of a sudden, people were like, holy crap, that, that's selling fast. And now the original ones that I, I went to on the first hit list, I try to activate regions yeah. so that we're not flooding regions at one time. And it really gives those independents time to shine so they're not being overloaded. Sure. We didn't go to chains first just to give, again, the independents yeah. of supporting small businesses that was on purpose to give them a chance. And it's funny now, now that we're going into Texas and we're about to activate chains, we're going to do all these things. The ones that didn't hop on the chain are kind of like... Like, I'm so sorry. I don't yeah, have I don't it. Have I'm it. so sorry. Yeah. So, but I do in terms of Texas, it is allocated. It's not a first come first serve in the, in the sense of like a lot of people are calling me like, Oh my God, Texas is huge. They're going to take all of those barrels. We do allocate it based on sure. state for a percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so while they are getting, there's, there's barrels coming to Texas. Don't you worry. But, yeah. um, every state will get an opportunity. Louisiana won't be left, but we are growing beyond Louisiana. Um, also, Arkansas, poor baby, we, we did launch Arkansas about a, a year and a half ago. It was mm. kind of like a soft launch. We didn't really know what we were doing. Lessons learned. We're gonna do much better in Texas and kind of relaunch that. There's gonna be barrels going to Arkansas as well. Oh, there's so. much more traction here, Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, you've already targeted some of the bourbon uh, whiskey groups. Um, I don't know how far west you've gone, uh, or south. I'd, tell me why I just did the map, northeast, southwest. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you've hit East Texas a pretty good day. Mm -hmm. And yep. I know that a lot of consumers in this area have, have sampled the, the, the small batch and had a taste at a minimum of a single barrel. Yeah. And, and have been very impressed. I met with some groups in Colorado, oh. Kentucky, Florida, mm -hmm. um, D.C., Virginia, like kind of gone outside the south there. Um, kind of use it as a trip. We're on Berman Outfitters now shipping. That was a huge oh, thing sweet. for us. Okay. Yeah, in terms of that was like a two-year thing to finally get on there. We had some help um, from Randy Sullivan from uh, Berman oh, Grill yeah. Talk. He really helped yeah. us. Um, yeah. and Ryan's awesome. He's worked with us. So that really got us into all of these, like the 37 states you can ship and has really made a direct where now the groups are, hey, you know, I've contacted before. They don't really know who I am. Mm -hmm. Ships to them. They're like, whoa now and so it's really allowed to create a face to that brand and get in front like I said this is a people sharing brand so I tell everybody like even our, our barrel picks as you know like I need to come in front because right. it, it just changes the experience we try to get people out I understand it's way different when we're talking about other states to come to branch it's a big feat we don't have airports you got to drive it, it's definitely a thing right. but it really creates because I love it I'll usually get calls like hey I don't know where we are but I, we're lost we're definitely lost and I'm like I can see you Turn around. I can see you. Come over here. We're in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. I'm like, because we are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and they're like, wow. Every single person like clockwork. Wow. This is a farm. Yes, it is. <laughs> no false marketing here. It's right. a farm. And I'm like, watch for the dog. You know, like we yeah. just got things running around. And so, Go ahead and sit on the, uh, the tasting yeah, cushions. Yeah. The tasting cushions. Yeah, the tasting that was cushions. That's a new one for me. Everybody's yeah. been asked, like, what's a tasting cushion? I'm like, it's a pillow. I just Giving yeah, it a new it's name. a customized <laughs> pillow. Um, just before we go to our, our last, well, second to last break, um, these single barrels yield anywhere from 150 to 200 bottles. Mm -hmm. Most whiskey groups have anywhere in the realm of like 1,000 members, 900 to 1,000 members if it's a really healthy group, which means in some cases these bottles last for 30 seconds mm -hmm. uh, when people are, you know, like committing to a bottle. Like, hey, I want one, I want one, I want one. And that's if they limit people to just one. Yeah. And not say, well, I want six or I want two because I happens. have a friend that, exactly. So if um, you got groups in Texas and you're interested, definitely reach out to me. All yeah. of our platforms it, are me. I really try to link them to people. Yeah. Uh, we do have picks that are just like at a store, but I really, whether it's linking to all the management or all the store managers come over and it, it becomes their pick but I really link it to people so they feel like they're really linked to this because then they share it and it expands from there. Um, so groups, absolutely. I always yep. want to get in front of groups. Cool. Yeah. All right. Our last segment. Go ahead, DJ. Get it, DJ. Our final segment of Spirit Squared. Um, really enjoying the conversation here. Okay. Uh, we... <laughs> okay. Um, have a lot of fun with you. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I enjoy your passion about something that I'm, I'm passionate about. Uh, appreciate, again, everybody 
showing up. Uh, really enjoyed you guys' positivity. We still have tons of, of, of stuff for you guys over here. And uh, we're going to get into the social media aspects of yeah. your business because I think that's where you shine. <laughs> yeah. I try. <laughs> um, if you've ever seen any of her uh, your, your reels, I mean, it's you're a tense person, uh, <laughs> and uh, and you have your own crew, right? I'm I'm the crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have almost a thousand followers uh, on one social media page. Yeah, the Rice Water Crew. Rice yeah. Water Crew. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's a Facebook page. So that name came. It's really funny because. I think one of the biggest um, kind of, I guess, disagreements, and that's a negative word, but not that, but the rice aspect, because as you know, it's the hardest thing. We actually had some people that said, like, I was ready for this not to be good. You know, that's the major thing. People usually come up to me to prove to me that this can't be good, that rice cannot make a good whiskey. And I love the face that it's made. Like, and I call it the millic lean, you know, they, they oh. whoa. And I'm like, oh yeah, you lean in for me, you lean in. Right. And so one of the, the words that we kind of, as a company kind of, Solid in line, half of us didn't want to ever say rice. Don't say rice, have them try it and then tell them rice. And the other, I was on this side, I was like, embrace the rice. Like put it everywhere, right in their face. And the, the, the consumers really made the decision. And so the rice water crew came from the same group, Canadian Bourbon Society, really went to that barrel, locked into the brand and started calling themselves the rice water crew. Like they'd walk in, they'd pick that first barrel, they're JT Miller fans, they'd hype us up. And so finally I was talking to, um, so, uh, somebody that worked at did PR for Buffalo Trace, and she was talking about how um, they have a, the biggest asset that she has as PR is a Facebook group that she started. I, I can't remember what she called it, but people would go in and start talking about anything that went wrong or well. So if she had a cap that went wrong or this or that or like the best single barrel, she would get so much data from that, and it just showed all of the fans really interacting. And I was like, I really like that idea. So we started the Rice Water Crew, and so I just kind of. Like, put it out there, and again, I didn't really advertise it. I just, like, let it work itself, and people right. telling people, and it's just kind of, it's pretty new in the last few months, and just people keep coming in, and they're sharing their pictures of Dates and Milik, and it's more more people every day. So that's, that's really exciting. Like, we were at a point when we first released where we joke around. We used to, we have a hashtag Milik moments, and we would do these giveaways, which is really cr cool if you see what we've done with, like, the 12 days that we just had yeah. Yeah. versus what we used to do. I used to... <laughs> I used to like call like my friends and I'm like, Hey, I just posted a picture. Can you go and share it to your page and you're going to win something? Right. And they would go and they would share it. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I tell people like we had somebody from blah, 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 share it. And like, we had to call people to share. And now it's organically moving in that direction. So yeah, it's on Facebook. If you want to join rice water crew yeah. and then you can just share your milk moments. Right. So what's something that's like gone viral that you, you were a little surprised about? Oh, the most that I've been surprised about is I did this random picture. I was in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana Food and Wine uh, Festival. I think that was, no, that one was in Lake Charles. I was at an, I was in New Orleans, and I just posted a random picture. I put them in like a triangle, all coming out, and I was like, squads all here. Like it was just one picture, and it reached like 12 million people. Like it was Holy. nobody was in it. It was just on my page I just posted it thinking like oh I gotta do a post today like I was behind like snap a picture squad's all here I'm like what the heck you never know what the algorithm's gonna do I'm right. just like never know there are things that I'm like oh, this is gonna be good and I'm like oh didn't, didn't do so well but right. you know now our what is to me I, I laugh about it because sometimes I'll go back I'm like ah, that's disappointing it didn't do as well but I'm like in comparison to where we were a year ago, this is fantastic. Like, right. it's growing every single day that the new, like, low is getting higher. So. Is it, was there, I know for me, when I, I'm on the right rice water uh, crew, and I'll see somebody post that's from Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how did that happen if you're only distributed to Louisiana, yeah. currently in Arkansas? Yeah. So, it has to be them either find somebody who helps them mm -hmm. or they come and visit, they love it, they get another bottle, yeah. they travel with it, and now it's, you know, they're sharing it with friends. You know, I mean, that's basically grassroots yeah, yeah. is what you're dealing with yeah. here in so, on social media. Yeah, it's really been a powerful navigator, just like when... It took me some time, like all of us, we're, the entire family, everybody that works with us at the farm is just adapting every single day to what this industry is. 
and just figuring it out and just kind of getting better at it every time and just the power of the internet and what it can do. It's been amazing to see just the, how receptive we are to the brand. And absolutely like I will get people that will assume that we can ship and that we can sell these things. And like, I'm sending it places and I'm like, no, if you see it in Alaska, it's because somebody's got it there. Somebody right. came here. Somebody flew. I, I had this guy. I'm not even kidding. He came to Louisiana. He flew from Oregon, flew from Oregon, called the office. He was like, I need this amount of single bars. I need this. Blah, 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 blah. I'm shipping it back. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I can't ship for you, sir. He was like, uh, okay, um, I'm on my flight. He's calling the airline. How much alcohol can you put in his check bag? Yeah. And he's like, is it total or per? He's like, they're saying it's each. So I'm going to go get some new suitcases. He goes to the store, buy some new suitcases. Is packing the stuff up with bubble wrap. Right. And he's like for, tossing it up and down. And he sends me a picture later. He's like, gang's all here. We made it. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, right. And somebody will share with somebody. I mean, like just, and it'll go out. Like the, the bourbon group uh, out of Homa that did the pick. All of a sudden, people, I'm getting text messages from other people in other states. Like, oh my gosh, I love this barrel. And I'm like, it just got on the floor yesterday. How did it get over there? Mm -hmm. And it's just really great to see the, we just try to put like the empowerment in the consumer. That's what every bottle matters from start to finish. We make sure that every bottle is a value added to them. And you can tell because then they share with their people, they share with their friends, they share with their family, and then they want to share. And it's yeah. just, it's developing from there. And it's really become like, you know, I forgot what the theory is, but like you make three friends, you do three, uh, th one nice thing to three people and they do mm -hmm. it and it expands from there. And I just, it's, it's really cool. Just the power of social platforms and digital and how fast they can get to places. Has there, has there been a moment in the past, I'm assuming the last like year to two years where you, where you go, we've made it. Oh, I feel like every day almost like I, I tried to really make it a conscious, conscious, one of those effort to really look back at where we started because it's very easy to get like mapped into like the new norm and forget where we started. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I'll give you a perfect example. Two, three weeks ago, I had a, um, when our rep called me and she was like, Hey, you know, blank is really disappointed from their barrel. Pick. I'm like, Oh, what happened? Like, give me some feedback. She's like, he just didn't think it sold fast enough. Mm. And I was like, okay, what, what, you know, what is it? What's the account? And I'm like, hold up. I'm like, let me go back. I'm pretty sure like maybe my memory, because eventually I usually can remember every barrel number and like, but eventually we'll do too many that I can't. Sure. And I'm like, okay, hold on one second. I'm like, let me go back. I'm like, he just got it three months ago. Like, what do you mean? And he was like, uh, I mean, he's just been seeing everybody sell out in days. He was just really disappointed. And I was like, I just started like busting out laughing. I was like, I'll go see him. I went over there. I was like, blank. I'm not going to answer a name, but I was like, dude, <laughs> that's a good time frame. He's like, I know. I thought about it as soon as she left. I'm thinking to myself, that's still really great. But in my head, our first pick flew, like flew right. within days. And now yeah. you're getting new people. Yeah. And so to me, I'll panic sometimes. Like it'll be on the floor for three days. I'm like, Hey, how's it going? They're like, Oh, we got 10 cases left. I'm like, oh my God, people don't like us anymore. Oh my God. And I'm yeah. like, that is, it doesn't work that, way. Doesn't work that way. It just, yeah. it, it's a slow and steady. And then eventually, you know, the next week. And so just kind of getting to the point of, you know, regulation and the more barrels we have, the more it becomes not, people aren't running to grab it because they think they'll never going to see it again. We're coming to a point yeah. where they can trust it in those areas. Um, so every day, I mean, every time we reach a new goal, I've really tried to highlight it in our meetings mm -hmm. because it's very easy to say like, um, like your goal for small batch. I mean, we had a couple weeks where I just kept looking and the consensus of the, the group was like, oh, our consumption's down. I'm like, I'm telling you, our consumption's not down. And they're, you know, all the business guys, consumption's, consumption's down. Oh my God, we're not going to buy our barrels. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, okay, I got to find a new way to outline this. And I was able to move it around to show. And then everyone's like, oh, it's not down. It just looks different, you know? So right. just like really perspective. This has blown up way more than we ever thought yeah. it would. This yeah. was just supposed to be Mike's martini time. Like we were just going to give it away for holidays, adding value to the rice, sustainability. You got to do it. And now it's like, we're distillers, even though we're just farmers for good out. Yeah. You're entering the industry contest. Yeah. I mean, and you're, and you're winning medals, too. Yeah, 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 we are. Vodka included. Vodka's yeah. really good. I know it has a bad name, but give it a try. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
All right, my favorite part of the podcast. Oh. My favorite part is shout outs. Shout outs. Yeah, it's like my it's my favorite part because it's like the guest opportunity to kind of maybe recognize some folks that don't get the same recognition as some others. Um, you're welcome to shout out your husband who's packing you up to go to Iowa. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to do that. We leave I mean, in a I couple hours. Did, I just did. I'm, shout hey, out. shout out, man. You're packing her up. Y'all going to Iowa? It's going to be awesome. He's probably drinking the whiskey right now. Yeah. He's dealing with our two-year-old who's decided she's 21 now. Just right. using phrases and words like she runs the place. Right. So, yeah, absolute shout out to him. It's funny. I drag him anytime he's free. He's coming to events with me. Like, and it's funny just like to the idea most people will go to him assuming like he's a distiller or something. Right. And he'll just be like, foreign. He's, he's just like a, what do they call the, um, what's the dog when they say like, you know, there's he's from Iowa. Of, uh, the he's just from Iowa. like my Labrador husband or whatever, you oh, know, that's just okay. super friendly and like really wants to make friends. And he's just like that. And he's pouring the whiskey and then they're like, oh yeah. And you know, he can say the initial launch and then they get all into like a question. He's like, I don't really actually work here. I don't know the answer. And then he was just like, her. You know, it's so funny. Absolute shout out to him because he's amazing, always dealing, always driving me places, helping me out. Really shout out to anybody that works within the vicinity of me and with me. You know, when people, the, the videos that I do, it took a long time for me to get kind of get the, a, like, um, courage to get in front of the camera rather than behind. I'm used to being behind it. And so when people say, like, they'll meet me in person, and they're like, holy crap, like, it's really you. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is me. It is me. This is authentic. Yeah. But what drives into the energy quickly drives into my structure. Like, yeah. everything's a process. We have a goal. We have to get it. We have to move it. And so I am very detail-oriented, very organized. Anybody can go on to – I have a digital um, planner where it's, like, everybody has a responsibility checking yeah. off. And so we're moving. And so a lot of people in my office will like to say, like, on our morning call, like, I got to get blank, blank, blank to Mia first thing, because we all know if I don't, she'll be in my office, like, hey, where's my thing? Right. Like, you're late. So, yeah. shout out to every single person that works with us on the farm, you know, managing, it's kind of a oversee, if you need it, I do it kind of thing. So, anybody on the farm, we right. got we got Ed, Mark, and Mike are kind of like the three brothers. Ed is my uncle from another mother, and yeah. he runs the farm, all of them, you know, I'm the firecracker that keeps, keeps them moving. So, shout out to Brett, our distiller, Brad. And just everybody. So our, our, you know, biggest shout out to our bottlers. So we have three oh. bottlers, uh, Brad, John, and Mason. They put every single label, every single sticker, handwrite every single barrel, and went at every single bottle on the back. So that's and who we blame if it's wrong, right? Yeah, no, yeah I'm absolutely. Kidding. I'm kidding. No. Um, but especially like when I, you know, every barrel that goes out, especially where there's an influx, they're, they're pulling extra hours sometimes. I'm like, hey, guys, you know, like I, I warned them ahead of time. Like you've got five barrels coming in, and they, they crush it. So – I, I can keep on going, but absolutely, the, the people that don't really get the attention or, or seen in the show, the behind the scenes, couldn't do it without them. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, it was awesome to have you Thanks on. for having me. I love me. your energy, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. We're just like having an egg, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy, energy, you know? <laughs> oh, um, the energy. I just let you talk, and then I just kind of jump in when I can. It's funny. <laughs> uh, Dustin, my husband, is always like, you should make a video before 9 a.m., and I'm like, <laughs> before 9 a.m there's nothing there i like yeah. roll out and i'm just like i'm not a morning person I'm like yeah. my daughter's not either you know like i feel like i should get a picture of her and make a meme for jt Millick because she like pops out and her hair's everywhere and she's like what yeah yeah and i'm like that's not it. anything before 9 a.m you'll never see anything posted before nine and if it was that video was from yesterday right <laughs> because i was preparing for a day like tomorrow's video i'm in the car we're heading to iowa 7 a.m sharp the toddler's going to probably be on my lap the whole time, entertaining her for 18 to 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, I made my video today in the car to prepare for mama's right, hair right, everywhere. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming, yeah. especially thanks since you're me. leaving. Huh? Yeah. Um, hopefully, on the road it was, again. hopefully it was fun. You've been to Texas a couple times now. Yeah. And I yeah. uh, really appreciate you joining the, the podcast. It's been, it's been a great experience. Absolutely. Um, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Especially with the, the live audience we got here. Great <laughs> live audience. Thank you guys for... For being here, you guys got some samples. We got you liquored up, so you know. Thanks for the applause. Woo um, thank you to our DJ. Yeah, DJ, great. Yeah. He didn't it. say the whole name this time. Yeah, I was like, uh, bring the beat back, DJ. Bring the beat back. That's it. Um, and appreciate the Beckham. As always, appreciate you, Josh, for uh, 
do, putting up with me pretty much and uh, dealing with the podcast and, and getting it posted and all that good stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for uh, joining us. This is Spirit Squared. I'm Andrew Darrington, your host. We'll catch you on episode 12. <laughs>